Get ready for more extinctions on Earth, or at least more apocalypses. Let's talk more about them. Hey, what's up, guys? The Lone Top 10's here with another awesome Top 10 made just for you. The planet Earth has seen some seriously savage events in the ancient past, and researchers have only recently been able to assemble enough details to present us with a rough picture. The impact that wiped out the dinosaurs has been well covered, but will include here because of a recently discovered twist. The saga of Earth's violent youth is still being written and the chapters penned by modern science are far more fascinating than any high-budget Hollywood epic. So here are the top 10 prehistoric planetary apocalypses I'll talk to all you about that. But first, make sure you subscribe to the Lone Top 10s for more great content Monday through Friday. Alright, first one we're going to talk to you guys about is number 10 with the Younger Dry Ass Impact, or like gases. Art. Now, much of North America's classic megafauna include ma mastodons, saber-toothed um, cats, um, giant sloths, and more went extinct around 13,000 years ago. This extinction con concluded uh, with a geological period known as the Younger Dryas. The Younger Dryas occurred near the end of the last ice age when the earth was warming and glaciers were receding. For some reason, the warming stopped and global temps plumped uh, plummeted up to uh, 24 degrees Celsius, in other words, 43 degrees Fahrenheit, within a few short decades. The chill lasted for over 10, well, 1,000 years, killing many species. This extinction has been described by geologists as geo geologically instantaneous and the most extreme manifestation of climate change in the geological record. Although it, is, it was a mystery for many years, scientists today have a very interesting theory as to what brought about such conditions. As ice ages end and glaciers retreat, very large meltwater lakes can form within the glaciers themselves. Lake Agassiz was one such incredible incredibly massive lake. It spanned a general area of roughly 945,000 square kilometers, or approximately 365,000 square miles, which is about five times the land area of North Dakota. The ice dam containing this lake collapsed, releasing nearly 16,000 square kilometers of cold, fresh meltwater into the warm ocean currents and dropping the Earth's temperature. A current school of thought is that an asteroid may have caused this dramatic cold snap. Harvard scientist Mick Mike Hale um, Pitev and his colleagues state that this impact is evident from high amounts of platinum and iridium, cosmic fingerprint evidence of an iron um, meteoroid impact. There were, they were found in the Greenland ice core sample from this part of the Heliocene Epoch. Other scientists have discovered nanodiamonds in impact um, produced carbon particles from this same sediment layer supporting the hypothesis. Alright, we're going to head on to number 9 now with the gamma ray burst mass extinction. It, as it appears from Earth, the cosmos seems to be the most peaceful nighttime image of serenity, but it can also be the stage of extreme violence. Gamma ray bursts, or GRBs, occur at the supernova depths of massive stars and are the most powerful explosions in the universe. The extremity of their violence, well, um, is hard for the human mind to comprehend. They can last for, from milliseconds to minutes, and in that time frame, it meant as much energy as the sun puts out in 10 billion years. The University of Kansas and NASA scientists have but used atmospheric uh, modeling to hypothesize that such that just such an explosion may have caused a mass extinction that occurred during the Ordo uh, Vitium period. This was over 200 million years before the first dinosaurs walked the earth, and long before there was any animal or significant plant life on land. The scientists determined that even a 10 second burst from 6,000 light years away would destroy half the Earth's ozone and expose all living things to lethal ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Small life forms that form the base of the food chain, such as plankton, would be severely depleted. Now, chemical changes in the atmosphere would 
would have led to um, planetary cooling, disrupted ecosystems everywhere. Brian Thomas, then a PhD candidate at the University of Kansas, said that as much as 60% of the marine invertebrates may have been wiped out, and near-surface creatures would have um, been immediately affected by the lack of food and exposure to the sun's ultraviolet rays while the deep water creatures could have held out for longer eventually the chain um the food chain disruption would have caught up to them as well an interesting bbc documentary was done on the subject and you can view it um in the link in the description box below all right guys we're going head on to number eight with the lunar cataclysm now um, imagine the Earth being hit with many massive space rocks, picture Texas-sized boulders, over a stretch of many billions of years. This occurred early in Earth's history, around 3.9 billion years ago. Earth would have been a miserable place to be alive, says Oregon State University researcher Robert Duncan. Known as the Late Heavy Bombardment, this event describes a series of deadly impacts suffered by Earth early in its history, likely due to the disturbance of the asteroid belt um, between Earth and Mars. Evidence on Earth for these impacts has long been erased due to erosion and plate tectonic action, so it wasn't until the moon landings that retrieved moon rocks told the story. Chemical quote-unquote fingerprinting and radiometric data techniques used on moon rocks have revealed that both the Earth and Moon sustained a meteoric uh, barrage around the time that life is thought to have first have begun developing on our planet. Scientists believe the bombardment lasted for about 100 million years. Here are some current theories as to the origin of the asteroid belt disturbance. The existence of a planet V that formed within the zone of uh, small planets but was walled up by the Sun. The synchronous uh, resonance of Jupiter's and Saturn's orbits, the most popular theory, and a possible collision of the unnamed 10th and 11th planets in the outer, outer solar system. Alright guys, we're going head on to number 7 now with the storage of slide. Now, imagine that the United Kingdom was once a peninsula of Europe and not an island. What fantastically violent event would transform this landmass into the island nation that we would recognize today? Start with the land side the sky the size of Scotland, place it underwater in the darkness of a prehistoric ocean, amid all kinds of undiscovered ancient and deadly marine life, and picture the resultant tsunami. It paints a frightening picture indeed. Around 8,000 years ago, that is exactly what happened off the Scandinavian coast. A prehistoric earthquake shifted up to 3,500 cubic kilometers, or 840 cubic miles, of a sediment, roughly 2,000 times the mass of material that was displaced during the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. It slid across the sloping ocean floor for about 500 miles, or 800 kilometers. The tsunami punched the shores of Norway with a front wave about 35 feet high. It was 30 feet high in the Faroe Islands and up to 90 feet high in the Shetlands. A landlocked Norwegian sea was released into the Marspekulae Tundra, or the Doggerland region as it was called, turning the southern lowlands into the English Channel as we know it today. Anyone standing out on the mudflats at that time would have been dismembered. The speed of the water was just so great, says geologist David Smith of Oxford University. The waves would have been maybe as much as 33 feet high. Now just remember, the earthquake may have been caused by a collapse of sponge-like methane hydrate deposits on the subterranean floor at the base of massive sediments that had built up over a very long time. The water hit the English coast with enough force to travel 25 miles inland, entirely changing the coastal geography and dooming whether hunter-gatherer colonies existed in the area. The dry coal tundra that was home to thousands of our mammoth hunting ancestors was completely submerged. Shockingly, it wasn't even the largest slide in ancient history. Most scientists agreed that that honor goes to our next entry, which is 
Number 6 with the Marque Grunt Gravity Slide. Geologist David Hacker, Robert Bieck, and Peter Rowley wrote a paper on an ancient landslide, once thought to have been several different slides separated in time, but eventually found to be one jaw-dropping monster of a landslide. Most other ancient landslides that have been discovered so far, as fearsome as they are in scale and magnitude, pale shamefully in comparison. 21 million years ago, a landslide occurred between what is now Beaver, Utah and the Bryce Canyon National Park. Large masses of rocky sediment built up over long periods from volcanic action rested heavily and at a steep angle of top a weaker layer of softer clay-rich sediment. Magma swelling into a dome-like um, structure put even more pressure on the weaker layers, supported it until it collapsed. The collapse may have been triggered by a violent event, like an earthquake or eruption. Once loose, the mass massive sheet of rock slid on the top of the softer clay layer for miles until the clay layer stopped. Then the top mass slid on its own even further. The entire mass slid over 55 miles and covered roughly about 1,300 square miles. It was very fast moving, taking only a few minutes, and it was violent, overrunning every living thing in its path. Most of the slide itself was composed of huge blocks that covered several kilometers apiece. To this day, they are mostly upright and intact. The immense friction from the side uh, melted from the slide melted rock into glass structures known as pseudotacolites. The discovery of these pseudotacolites provided the initial indicators of the presence and magnitude of the landslide. Alright, we're going to go on to number 5 with the Gibraltar Breach. The Rock of Gibraltar offers a majestic view. You may look at the African coast from its Andalusian summit in Europe and watch the boats pass through the Strait of Gibraltar. Um, Gibraltar. Now, during an ice age, about 5.3 million years ago, the lower sea level gave rise to a narrow land bridge that joined um, Europe to Africa, blocking the entry of the Atlantic Ocean. The Mediterranean Basin was a desert with very salty lakes left over from seawater that had evaporated about 300,000 years earlier. That ice age ended, the sea level rose, and the land bridge subsided just enough to allow a breach. It started slowly as a trickle, and over several thousand years, built up enough steam to become one of the largest wa waterfalls the world had ever known. It carved an even deepening channel into the land as it grew. The flow of seawater contained probably 1,000 times the volume of the Amazon River. The trickle became a torrent of such magnitude that 90% of the Mediterranean basin was refilled in in as little as a few months. Although it may have taken as long as two years, according to Daniel Garcia Castellanos, a um, geophysicist in Barcelona, Spain, under these conditions, the Mediterranean water level would have been rising as much as 33 feet a day. It had destroyed any and all flora and fauna that existed at the time and created the Mediterranean Sea as we know it today. The substance of um, tectonic plates is thought to be the cause, but much research is left to be done before more definite conclusions can be reached. Alright, we're going to go on to number 4 now with the Black Sea Deluge or Noah's Flood. Now, no less a legend that Dr. Robert Ballard, discoverer of the wreck of the Titanic, has proposed a theory that would explain the origin of the well-known flood myths of ancient lore. A 1999 marine expedition led by Ballard discovered signs of human occupation and man-made structures at the bottom of the Black Sea. The discovery of an ancient shoreline as well as the remains of freshwater mollusks indicated that there was once a freshwater lake under what is now the Salty Black Sea. This was evidence of a massive flood, radiocarbon dating, supports a date 
from the deluge of around 7,000 years ago. Rising sea levels were caused by melted glaciers during a warming period at the end of one of the many past ice ages. These waters threatened the area around the Bosphorus Strait, which may have been a land bridge at one time. It is now a land bottleneck in Asia Minor that opens up into the Black Sea. At some point, the land bridge was breached. The Mediterranean Sea poured in at roughly 42 cubic kilometers every day, perhaps with a force of 200 Niagara Falls. According to Columbia University marine geologist Bill Ryan and Walter Pittman, it would have left the terrified survivors to hand down legends of the flood through oral traditions of many generations. It may have inspired the flood stories of Noah, Gigamash, and other peoples of the ancient world. Alright guys, we're going to go on to number 3 now with the Great Dying. Also known as the uh, Paraminian Tri Triastic um, Extinction Event, the Great Dying was the largest mass extinction of life on Earth. It happened many millions of years before the planets ruled the planet. Nearly a quarter of a billion years ago, at the end of the Parmenian era, 90% of the planet's life was completely, boom, wiped out. Only 4% of sea life survived. Almost all the trees were gone. The culprit of this terrible geologic crime is believed to be massive flood basalt eruptions that happen in a region known today as the Siberia Traps. Flood basalt eruptions differ from familiar forms of volcanism. Instead of lava erupting from a cone-like mountain, it erupts from large openings in the earth itself and spreads over a very large area. This is believed to have occurred when the earth's landmass consisted of one continent called Pangaea. The specific event um, location was what is now known Yamande, Siberia. The eruption covered an area of 3 million cubic kilometers and it lasted for millions of years. Massive amounts of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide were released into the air, poisoning the atmosphere and causing an abrupt climate change. An area the size of the United States was covered in lava about 0.6 miles deep. The oceans were acidified and starved of um, oxygen. Ocean circulation was also impeded. Short-term nuclear winters would have, would have been followed by long-term global warming. The long-term effect was devastating to all life, and the planet took millions of years to recover. It's literally a singular event in Earth history. It's a monster, says the MIT PhD Seth Burgess. It makes Yellowstone, a supervolcano, look like the head of a pin. Very simple. Alright guys, we're going to go on to number 2 with the Shiva impact. Double dinosaur killing impact. Like, it's like, um, you know, Super Mario Bros, except you are killing dinosaurs. Alright, like, you're trying to kill double Bowsers, kind of. Well, that's kind of it's very similar to. However, according to a new theory, it, it was not one, but two asteroid impacts that killed the dinosaurs. The well-known, um, chicken luba critter, uh, um, crater of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico bears witness to the massive impact that led to global climate changes and mass extinction. The asteroid that hit the Earth in Lake Crustaceous 65 million years ago was about 6 miles wide and produced a crater about 110 miles across. A mere 300,000 years later, while the Earth was still geologically recovering from that impact, a 25-mile rock hit the ocean off the west coast of India, leaving a crater that was 300 miles wide. Alright, if we were correct, paleontologist um, Sankar Chatterjee, uh, Chatterjee said that this is the largest crater known on Earth. The crater was appropriately named the Shiva Crater after the Hindu god of destruction. It is thought that, that this event broke the um, Saicheya's um, islands off the Indian subcontinent. Some scientists have stated that the Earth's crust was vaporized at the point of impact, initiating the flood of basalt volcanism of the Deccan Traps, similar to the Siberian Traps. This released 
of noxious gases and accelerated the rate of a volcanism that was already rife in the area of western India at the time. The impact was so severe that it deformed part of the Earth's lithosphere ment mantle and shattered the Indian tectonic plate where the asteroid hit it. Between the lethal kinetic impact energy, the massive tsunami, the lava flood jailbreak, and the gas release, struggling species that were previously on the edge must have had no chance. The impact far surpassed the uh, Chicxulubab trade on the crater in scale violence. The dinosaurs were really unlucky, said Chatterjee. Very simple. Alright guys, we're going to wrap up this big list with number one with the Thaya impact. Now, the mother of all cosmic impacts occurred when a Mars-sized planet known as Thea has struck Earth during the free-for-all Billards game of colliding planetary bodies early in the history of the solar system. The Earth was smashed into a barely intact spinning method of molten rock. This cataclysm produced the habitable Earth that we know today and gave us our boot. Molten debris that spun off immediately after the violent collision was kept in a gravitational orbit by the rump of Earth that remained. The debris gradually um, colonized into the familiar sphere that everyone knows um, in our night sky, that appears in our night sky, I should say. Quite as again due to the Apollo missions and the subsequent study of moon rocks, it was found that the Earth and the moon rocks were uncannily similar in the comp composition. This led scientists to de um, deduce that the Earth and moon were um, once the same object, which was violently separated by a massive protoplanetary collision early in Earth's history. Daniel Harwartz, an isotope geochemist at the University of Gottingen in Germany, uh, Gottingen in Germany, found that the similarity in oxygen isotopes between moon rocks and earth rocks further reinforces the impact hypothesis. This group of meteorites has a very, very similar isotopic composition, um, composition to the earth, he said. Some scientists say that Thea was more of a E-type asteroid rather than recognizable planet as we would picture it. Alright guys, well that's pretty much about it. If you have any other apocalypses that are prehistoric and that are planetary that you want me to talk about, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll talk to you about it in the comments. Alright guys, that is pretty much about it. Hopefully you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe to um, the Lone Top 10s for more videos Monday through Friday. Don't forget to like this video and don't forget to support um, the Lone Top 10s. Well, by making sure that you share this video, obviously. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Take care.